He is working on recording. And I think we're all set now. All right, good, we're all set. All right, so let's talk about meal planning and how do we make this work with our, within our um, Beachbody nutrition plans and what that looks like. Because you might have heard a lot of different theories and kind of ideas about this. So I'm hoping to make this super duper simple for you. And this is a culmination of things that I have learned in my, what is this now, seven and a half years of being on a health journey and developing this lifestyle. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is how do you figure out what eating bracket you're supposed to be in in accordance to the nutrition plan that comes with your program that you're doing in BOD. Then we're going to talk about the food list and kind of understanding how they're organized. There is a little science to it. And then I'm going to talk with you about actually making the plan uh, using those tools from the food list. And then I'll talk about some best practice tips at the end. So very short and sweet, but just things that are going to help you really implement because it doesn't make any sense to make a meal plan without actually using it then. So we're going to talk about that. First thing we have to just kind of do kind of as a starting point is figure out what your numbers are and what eating bracket you're supposed to be in according to the meal plan. And that will be different depending on what your goals are for your particular journey. Some people, if you're trying to maintain your weight, then you're going to eat differently than someone who maybe has a lot of weight to lose. And you're going to eat differently than someone who's trying to like build a Hulk body, like a bunch of muscle, right? So I want to kind of talk you through this. You want to use the quick start guide. Every single program comes with one. It usually says start here, like you're seeing on the picture on the right. They're in the program material space. So when you go into BOD and you go into your program, it takes you to the workout list usually first. You want to click on the program materials, which you can see kind of highlighted in the yellow. From there, it will give you the calculations based on your weight and your goals for what you should be eating in in your eating bracket. So if I was on the 21 day fix eating plan, uh, which is the example I'm using, I would go into my BLD. So I'm going to switch the screen that I'm sharing and just show you this on my BLD. There we go. So in, I'm going to mute you uh, if you don't mind. In my BLD, I would go to the 21 day fix program, right? And I would click on it and then I'll go to the program materials and then I'll have the little start here guide. So I'll go ahead and launch it. It'll launch in another little screen here and then we can see our 21 day fix In the little start here for 21 day fix. The beginning is the um, workouts. Hey cat, welcome uh, towards this third page is starting to tell me like what I need to do as far as eating is concerned. So you can see it's a little bit small, um, but you can see my um, where I can do the calculations. So this is going to ask you for your weight. So you'll do that and you'll multiply it by 11 to get your caloric baseline. I don't do any of this math in my head. I let the calculator do it so that I get accurate numbers. Then you take your baseline and add 400 and that would be your maintenance category um, calories. Now, if you're trying to maintain your weight, then you would stay here on the maintenance category calories. And then that will determine your bracket based on what that number is um, based on the chart down here. If, however, you are trying to lose weight, then you're going to take that maintenance number. And in this example for 21 day fix, you're subtracting 750, which will put you in a caloric deficit and that'll be your calorie target. What you'll notice is again, based on whatever bracket you fall in, this is kind of your caloric goal, but we don't really count every little calorie. We, we focus more on the quality of nutrition, which is where these conditions are going to come into play. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be talking about next. So let's say just for example, that you're, you're falling into plan B for weight loss, then I can literally just kind of go down this table and be like, okay, I know I need to eat four veggies, three fruits, four proteins, three carbs, one healthy fat, one salad, four teaspoons within an entire day of eating. So now I know what my eating looks like. And that gives me a starting point for really being able to develop my plan. I'm going to close this and go back into our program materials. Any questions about that? So you guys are muted, um, but you can put your questions for me in the chat box uh, because I know we're calling from different locations. 
questions, comments, concerns, or you could type no questions for me in the chat box. Give a couple minutes while you're typing. All right, so another question I get, looks like there are no questions, um, is, well, how do I know if I should eat in weight loss or maintenance? Um, because we have some people in the group who are like, oh my God, I'm starving. So let's talk about that. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and just talk a little bit about how do I know where I should be um, when it comes to, should I stay in the maintenance bracket or the weight loss bracket? Most of us are in our group, uh, in the Fit Life Tribe, because we are wanting to lose weight. Uh, but there are a number of us who maybe have been with us for a while, um, maybe a year or so, and you've already hit your goal. So in your case, it's easy to know, oh, I want to eat maintenance. I don't have any weight to lose. Um, but some other indicators for you, if you as to whether or not you need to bump up a bracket in your eating, um, are whether or not you're sensing a feeling of still being hungry after eating all of your containers in a day. If you're still feeling hungry, that might be an indication for you that your body actually needs more fuel. So that means you need to bump up a bracket and you might even bump up just like half of the bracket, like one or two containers. But the point is that you don't want to be in starvation mode. Another indicator is whether or not you're feeling fatigued or you're feeling irritable and you're having frequent headaches. That means you're not eating enough. And that's really important to pay attention to um, these, these feelings because the more in tune you get with your body, that's what's gonna really kind of help you customize this to your needs. Um, and it doesn't mean we deviate all the way from this and be like, oh, well, I'm gonna eat half a pizza. It just means that we might, like I said, step up a bracket for um, what would have been our weight loss or eat and maintenance. A really good indicator, uh, because this is something that I experience in the current program that I'm doing, so I'm doing uh, the 80 day obsession. And in the first phase, I was really hungry and feeling fatigued and irritable. The calorie, the caloric deficit was too much for me. Um, and I didn't have a ton of weight to lose. I was just trying to drop, like I actually didn't care about losing any weight in general, but I was like, eh, if I could shed a little bit of body fat and maybe drop like, I don't know, seven pounds, I would be happy. That's not a ton of weight to lose. And I can manage to still do that in maintenance. If you're eating in a state where your body's in starvation mode, you actually work against your results. So this is really important to know. And, and when your body is in starvation mode, what that does is it slows your metabolism, but it also trains the body to hold on to every calorie that you get. And most of the time we'll store it as fat because the body's in a state of stress and it's going, oh, I don't know when she's going to feed me again. So let's just store everything because maybe there's a famine happening and then you find yourself not able to lose weight or I can't lose these last five pounds. It's typically because you're not eating enough. So if you are feeling any of these feelings on my screen, that fatigue, that irritability, you have like maybe two, five, two, five to two pounds to lose, seven pounds even, then it might be to your benefit to bump up and eat in the maintenance. You don't want to switch your bracket though. Give your body a couple weeks to adjust too. So I didn't just go all after the first week of being hungry and be like, mm, let me, this isn't working, just give up on it. I gave myself a full two weeks and I really monitored everything that I did in those two weeks and kept a journal. And then I made my decision about, well, should I bump up and how am I going to adjust to get to the results that I want? And if you're having trouble with this, because again, when you're new, there's a lot of feeling of uncertainty. Um, make sure you consult with your coach, the coach who invited you, so they can guide you through. And that's really important. So once you know your numbers and you know your bracket, am I going to eat in weight loss? Am I going to eat in maintenance? Then we can start to create our plan, right? Before we create our plan, I always use the food lists that come with your program as a guide. So um, the food lists that come in your program, they're in the nutrition section of that uh, program materials in BOD. And there's actually a little bit of a science to how it's organized and how things are listed. So what you'll see is that um, on the top of the list are the most nutrient dense foods for each category. And then the, le the less healthy or the less nutritious items are listed towards the bottom. So I know this screen again is kind of small, a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to switch gears and just open it up in on demand so that you can see um, kind of the full list. And I really use this as a guide for myself. So let's close this share. Welcome D, I see you there. And I'm just going to switch back to sharing my Beachbody on demand uh, window. I just got to, there we go. 
open it up. So again, when you're in the on demand, if you first open this, it takes you to the workout list. You want to make sure you go to the right on the program materials so you can see your materials. There is a nutrition segment. So I'm going to scroll on down. And there is my food list. -na. So I would just select this. And then I can see. Now, I'm not a paper girl, so I don't typically print this list out. I just open it on my laptop. Um, and then I usually will have a second window where I'm starting to kind of open up and write out, well, which things from these um, categories am I going to be eating? But what is important here and the reason I'm opening this up is, again, to just call your attention to how the most nutrient-dense foods are at the top. So you want to try to eat items from the top half of the bracket because that's going to get you the best results. It doesn't mean that we never eat from the lower half of this totem pole. So for example, I love oatmeal. I have oatmeal every day. It's down here towards the bottom in the yellow sec section, but I love oatmeal and I'm just not giving it up. <laughs> uh, pasta is down here, you know, so it's not something I want to have every single day with my yellows. I don't want two items from the bottom of this list and my yellows, but I might say, okay, um, a couple days a week, like on the weekend, I'm gonna have pasta. Or on a weekend, you see waffles down here. So somebody mentioned in our group, like, oh man, I feel like all I can eat is salads. You feel like that because it's new to you and you're hesitant about what's healthy and what's not. And so one of the ways to get past that, and one of the things that I did in my own journey was to really get familiar with this list. So make sure you're giving yourself that opportunity and looking through this list and being like, okay, what am I, what's okay, what's, you know, fix approved in this example that I can eat, you know, and there's a look at all this stuff, clams and octopus and tempeh and tuna and turkey and ham, like a lot of stuff that you probably eat on a regular basis or were already eating, just maybe not in the best portion. So that's where our containers will come in. So a lot of times I will just look at this list and just kind of peruse and be like, oh, what am I in the mood for? Because I do a lot of eating based on how I feel. <laughs> and then that helps me when I'm ready to actually compile my meal plan. Um, so I'm gonna stop this share here and I'm gonna unmute you guys because I don't wanna go too far without giving opportunity for questions. So I'm gonna unmute everybody. Any questions so far? I know some people just joined late. You didn't miss much, just the overview of what I was going to talk about <laughs> and uh, where to find your material so you know your eating bracket and about the food list. No questions. All right. Awesome. That's easy. If you do have questions and you're shy and you're like, oh my God, I don't really want to ask, there is a chat window. So, I'm on a computer, so on the laptop, the link for opening the chat is towards the bottom and then it shows up on the right. And you could send the message or the question just to me personally, and that way I don't have to call you out and be like, oh, well, Kat wants to know, like, you can <laughs> put it in the chat and I'll just say, this is a good question, here's blah, blah, blah. All right, one thing I do wanna say, and I'll go back to my PowerPoint so I'm gonna talk about this, about our, um, eating is that if something is not on the food list, doesn't mean you can't have it. So I'll give you an example. I love pickles. Pickles is not on the list, but I know what category of food that a pickle is, right? Like a pickle used to be a cucumber, which means it's a vegetable. I can eat that, it would count as a green. So sometimes there are things that you like that maybe aren't on the list, and it might require a little bit more of just kind of a stop and think because you're really paying attention to your food groups and your portions, but you can usually figure out what food group it belongs to, and if you can't, there are some resources for you. You can certainly um, reach out to us in the group, um, there's a lot of information on the Beachbody blog for some of this stuff, um, which you can access in BOD. There's a direct link to the blog. So that is another resource for you. And I'll show it to you once I go back to the BOD window. So don't feel restricted um, in that category. So for example, here's another example. Pizza, not on the list, right? So it's probably not a fix approved food. 
if you wanted to go like the new wave of pizza is like the whole cauliflower crust thing. So if you went that route, we would know, okay, I have the cauliflower crust. So that's a green tomato sauce is a, is a purple. Um, it's in the, it's in the list. It took me a while to get that, but it's a purple just has to do with how it's prepped, even though we know it's tomato based, just accept that that's how they count it. Um, and then whatever toppings I have, cheese is a blue. And then my toppings are most likely gonna be vegetable or red for meat. So you can kind of figure out what container combos, again, once you break down, well, what is in this food? Is it gonna be the highest thing on the bracket? No. Will you get to have a lot of it? No, but if you wanted to have sweet, you know that you can in the proper portions, right? So just other things okay. that, to, that you can think about. So let's talk about what we're really here for. How are we making this plan? And what does it look like? I like to work with spreadsheets. I, when I make my plans, I keep it super duper simple. I just open an Excel spreadsheet. I lay out my Monday through Friday. On, on Saturday and Sunday, I eat uh, more buffet style. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But then I just make a row for each different meal that we have. So I use my red as my mains when I'm setting up my meals, just like I would if I wasn't using the portion control containers. Usually meat is kind of the centerpiece of your dish. Um, and then I use my other containers as the side so I can start to figure out what goes where and how I'm going to make my meals. And then another thing you'll see me do, and again, I'll open up a spreadsheet. What did you say then, about you know, what? I repeat meals. When you was in the car. I'm going to meet everybody again just because I'm recording this and I'm going to go recording to be clear for those who need to watch the recording. I repeat meals to make life easy. So nine times out of 10, I eat the same breakfast Monday through Friday because that's easy for me. Um, I used to do like the same breakfast Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then a different breakfast Tuesday, Thursday, but it's just easier for me to just do the same thing and it sounds mundane, but that's quick and easy for me because my life is crazy busy. Um, I usually will have whatever I have for dinner um, as a leftover lunch for the next day. Um, I alternate dinners. Like there's lots of ways to repurpose food. And so I'll talk you through that as we start to design a plan. There is a question. I saw the chat window pop up. So I'm just going to open that up. Great question. So the question is, if you use the containers without following the plans, is there a way to, would you still see results? In some regards, the answer is yes. So initially you will, I'm going to be really transparent and Beachbody will probably be like, why would you tell people that? Because it's the truth. <laughs> That's why. Um, in the beginning, you will because you're watching your portions, but you will also plateau within usually two weeks, two to four weeks, you're going to hit a plateau because you're not following the meal plan. And I'm telling you this from experience. I've been a Beachbody customer long before I was a coach. I was a Beachbody customer starting in 2000, the end of 2010, beginning of 2011. And I did a lot of things my way in the beginning and the workouts are really challenging and I was busting my butt in the workouts and not seeing the physical results that I wanted because I wasn't doing everything. So in the beginning I would be like, oh, I lost like 10 pounds and blah, 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 and I feel good. And then I would plateau and be working out really hard and one, not have enough energy to get through the workouts because they, were, they are not a joke. They're really challenging workouts. And then two, doing all that hard work and struggling through and not seeing any change in my body. Um, so it really does matter that you follow these plans. And so, I mean, you could do it your way because it's up to you what kind of results you want. You could do it your way and get meh results, or you can do it the way that it's designed and get awesome results. Like if you want to know how the people in the pictures or how the coaches are having these transformations, it's because we don't deviate. And it took me several, I went through two or three programs of trying to do shit my way before I realized like what happens if I fully commit and just learn to adapt to a new eating style. So if you want to learn the hard way, if you're like me and you just have to learn from experience and do it the hard way, help yourself. <laughs> but if you are also like the new me and you want to uh, get awesome results the first time around and not feel like you wasted your time and get the return on your investment, I would challenge you and encourage you to just embrace the change. I, and I'll be honest, I know it's hard. Um, because like I said, I've been through this process myself and it's why I like guiding other people through trying to save you some time and save you some effort and get you like the most bang for your buck. So highly recommend just adapting <laughs> to what is here.
Uh, because I know what it feels like to get to the end of a 30 day program and be like, I look exactly the same. It is really heartbreaking. Like, I don't wish that on anybody. It's shitty. So uh, let's look at my, um, my table, kind of how I set this up and what I do. One of the things that I do in my table um, as well it, that you'll see, and let me show you this in the PowerPoint too, just so that you have the visual um, before I open it up in the spreadsheet. And I'll put this empty spreadsheet, maybe I'll put an empty version of the spreadsheet in uh, our, our group page so you can download the file and use that as a template. It'll save you some time. I'm all about saving time. Um, I want to include all of my containers when I'm making my meal plan. So one of the things I do is I have a column on the far right so I can list what containers I have and then I go back and I make sure I count them. You'll also see in my spreadsheet that I read out the number of each container that I'm allotted for a day in my meal plan at the very bottom. Um, that way I just have a, a reference point and I don't have to keep opening up like the start, the start guide and all of that. So what does this look like in my spreadsheet? Let me show you Excel. Um, so I made a pretty one for 21 day fix. Uh, and so what I would do is just at the bottom, I've already written out actually all of the containers. I know the serving sizes because I'm anal like that and I figured it out. <laughs> and I, part of that was because sometimes I'm traveling like or I'm at my mom's and if I forget to travel with my containers, then I have to use her measuring cup. So I just know the amounts and I write this down for myself. Um, but in this plan, if this was plan B, which I was using D's example from our group, if you were eating on weight loss plan B as a boy for um, 21 day fix, you get four greens, you get three purples, four proteins, three yellows, which are our carbs, one healthy fat, one dressing. I think all of the plans get one healthy fat you gotta savor it because you just get one for the day. And then your four uh, teaspoons. So I have it here. I also wrote it in a little gold bar down here so that I know. Now, what I like to do is just start figuring out, okay, I gotta have four reds, that's my proteins. That's gonna be my main meat. That's basically your main three meals, right? So we're gonna have a red for breakfast, a red for lunch, because everybody has some sort of meat. And if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're still doing some sort of protein combo, right? So that might be for you like beans or a, ve a, be a veggie patty or something like that, but still like you're using the same combo of macros. I don't know any other way to describe it. Macros being your food groups. So this is only three of them. So I know one of my snacks at some point. So these S's in the middle, these are for snacks. So what you'll wind up eating to make this easy is three main meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which you probably already figured out. And then you'll have two snacks. You wanna try to eat every two to three hours. So I write my snacks in a few different places because it depends on how my day goes. This would be like a mid-morning snack, but if I have to teach for my day job, sometimes I have to talk through mid-morning snack, and so I can't eat there. So I might do the lunch uh, snack between lunch and dinner, because usually around 4, 4.30, everybody's looking for like something at, at work. So that's a good place to snack, and then have a snack after dinner, which is kind of cool. If you have it as a dessert and save your Shakeology there, then you're gonna have like a nice dessert. It's like a little ice cream before dinner, which is pretty freaking cool. So that would be one of the other places that I'm gonna put this fourth red, because I don't want a double red. Um, so what I'll do is put in here, maybe I'll put it down here at the bottom for that red snack. Uh, but one of these needs to be um, a red. So what I normally do for the fourth red is Shakeology because it counts as a protein, it has a red in it. And usually I don't schedule myself to teach classes in the morning for work. So I'm usually good to have that here. So I'm gonna put it there for my Shakeology. But again, if you're teaching like face to face with people and it's just not feasible, you can have that snack. Uh, between lunch and dinner or after dinner, wherever is space. Next thing is my greens. We know we got to get how many greens? We need four of those. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I can have a green right here. I can have a green right here. I can have a green right here. 
And then one of my snacks can be a green. Um, maybe that's going to be carrots or celery. I love me some celery and peanut butter. I love me some carrots and hummus. Like whatever way you can sneak it in there. If this is hard for you, like you don't like really care for vegetables, then drop your green inside your Shakeology. So this is for me automatically going to be some sort of Shakeology. Right, and so you could mix spinach in there. Spinach doesn't really have a flavor, so it'll just assume the flavor of the Shakeology, and it's a cool way to sneak your veggies in. So that's another way to do it if you're not like big on just eating raw veggies. Um, but there's my green, so I know where those are going. How many yellows do I get to have? I get to have, uh, let's go see, three of those down here. So I'm just going to pick where I want some yellow sides. If I know I'm a big rice eater, then I might be having a yellow at dinner, rice or potatoes. That's all my yellow stuff. Um, I could probably sneak in a yellow at lunch. And then you guys already know how much I love my oatmeal. So there, there's totally a yellow happening at breakfast. It's just happening. Again, if you're not a big, it's not your thing, uh, oatmeal for breakfast or cream of wheat or any of that yellow carbs, your yellow can also be a bagel. It could be a whole wheat, preferably an English muffin, so it still fits in the breakfast bracket. So I just like to write out all my containers before I start figuring out what I'm eating because then it's right on the same line and I can write it across. So this is just how I do it. You could do it the other way around. Um, I didn't count for my fruits. I'll get three of those a day. I love mixing fruit with my Shakeology, so that's gonna go over here. There's definitely gonna be one of those. Um, we can have maybe a fruit here for a snack. I like that. Um, especially if you have a sweet tooth. I am a recovered sugar addict. We're talking about you're looking at a girl who used to drink a 20 ounce Mountain Dew and have a Kit Kat or a king size bag of peanut M&Ms, they have to be the peanut ones, for breakfast. And then wash that down a couple hours later with a tall white mocha from Starbucks. And then have a cookie, the giant cookie, for dinner. Like I'm a super former sugar addict. So as a person, who knows a thing or two about beating sugar cravings, I will tell you, you want your, when you're starting to have that uh, 4 p.m. crash, that's a good time to have your purple, your fruit, because it's a healthy sugar boost. It's the good kind of sugar that the body processes well. Um, and so I would put that in my afternoon snack somehow, maybe a handful of grapes or whatever it is that can fit in my container. I love berries, by the way. Um, so there's my, my purples, right? One, two, I think I'm missing one because we get how many in this? Three of them. Um, and so another trick you can use if you get a sweet tooth at night, do your purple down here as the evening snack. And that will also keep you out of the midnight munchies because you're gonna be sugar sustained. I don't like to do these purples by themselves, sidebar. I would probably do this purple with paired with a protein, something that's gonna help you feel full. But in the beginning, this was a trick that I used to help myself get past my sugar craving of just, let me just have this and kind of spike in the evening. So it's just another way to think about this. Um, I would recommend like combining this with something. So maybe even just dropping it up here um, and just having it a part of the evening meal. So this is what I would do today, um, just because it's a little bit better for the body. And again, if you have questions at any point, just drop them in the chat. Next container that I haven't included yet, um, going on down, healthy fats. I need one of those somewhere. That's things like cheese and avocado. I used to put those a lot with like my lunch um, or with dinner, depending on what I'm making, uh, because I love like cheeseburgers. Yes, I eat cheeseburgers. Um, I love tacos and I like to put cheese on them. Sometimes I'll put them with my breakfast if I'm having like scrambled eggs with cheese. So my blue can kind of go a little bit of everywhere. Just depends on how I write my plan. But I know that I only get one of them. So you got to savor that thing if you're going to have it. So pick a spot in the day where it matters the most. Usually when we get the most cravings is when the time of day where we feel the most stressed out. So if that's evening for you, put your blue in the evening. I know that makes your dinner meal kind of big or your lunch meal kind of big, um, but it'll, it'll make a difference. You could also do this because blue also sometimes counts as like almonds and cashews if you're not big on like cheese and avocado. You can also drop the blue in one of these snack windows and be like, okay, we're gonna have green, purple, blue here. So this could be like, okay, I'm having 
carrots, and hummus, because that counts as a blue, with some fruit. So it's just about, again, learning my um, food list. So lots of different ways to kind of combine this. Last thing that I haven't accounted for are my dressings and my teaspoons. Dressings are easy because you just get one of them. So I might put that with my lunch. Usually with lunch, I have a side salad because it's quick and easy. So I might do, oh, why did that show up? I wanted to do orange here. And then I need to put all my teaspoons. We get four of those. That's like your oils and stuff. I use those a lot to help season my vegetables. I'm big coconut oil lover. Um, and then I, I love my um, nut butter. So I'll put that with my chocolate shakeology because it's like a Reese cup. So I will do like a teaspoon here. We can do a teaspoon here. We can do a teaspoon at lunch. So this one's gonna be kind of big. Whoa, hold on. Jim, can you mute that? Sorry. <laughs> Scared the bejeebus out of me is what happened. Mute it. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. Moving on. Sorry, that's my, let's see if he's making a cameo. That's Bay over here interrupting our class. <laughs> All right, so how many teaspoons is that? One, two, three. I think I have one more to add and I'll put it with dinner. Nine times out of 10, whatever you're cooking for dinner requires some sort of oil anyways. So we got all four. So I got all my containers and my list. Now all I have to do is just write in meals that fit this. For me, typical breakfast that includes a protein, eggs, dazzling my protein. Um, I usually, I like to do like grilled asparagus. So I'm just matching up what's on the right, grilled asparagus. Um, and then, like I said, I like oatmeal. You might put your eggs with your asparagus and um, inside of a, an English muffin. That's red, green, yellow. And then the teaspoon for me, I um, cook, again, I would cook my asparagus with the coconut oil. So it's implied for me because it's just a habit, but you can write it up here, like asparagus with coconut oil so that you know you're getting all your stuff. And then I could just copy this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, set. If I wanna do something different on Tuesday and Thursday because you like variety and you don't wanna be bored, then what I might do is um, waffles, that's a yellow. I love um, vegan sausage, so I would do sausage here. That's my red. Um, and then I just have to figure out my green and my teaspoon. And so I would do, because I like salads in the morning, so I would do a side salad. That's me. Uh, you might prefer some other type of green. Um, I usually do things that are light. So if I wasn't doing a side salad, again, I might go with like a broccoli or something like that that might saute well with the sausage uh, just to pair it up. But this is probably what I would do, to be honest, and top my side salad with um, some coconut oil or sesame oil because I love that flavor too. So there you have it. Breakfast is done. Shakeology, that for me, I do chocolate Shakeology, so I would probably do it the same each day with half a banana, and because um, I never get tired of it, and a teaspoon of nut butter. Done. Again, if you're like, oh, I need variety, you can do it totally different, right? Like I could do one time as a Shakeology, if you like chocolate covered strawberries with strawberries and if I did it this way, I would definitely add coconut oil because it's a little bit sweet. And so we have nice creamy, it'll make it creamy for you too. Um, so you have like this chocolate covered strawberry delight in there. Like, ooh, good. I didn't spell oil right. So you're seeing how this works, right? Like, does this make sense to everybody? You can type, yes, it makes sense in the chat for me. I just want to make sure it's clear. If I was doing lunches back in the day when I first started my health journey, I was big on sandwiches. So I might have like a tuna sandwich and that counts as already my red and my yellow with the side salad, which counts as my green and my orange. Um, and then I might drop, cause I would top it with like sesame seeds and then my teaspoon, again, I would use some sort of oil, maybe olive oil um, to um, top it like as a dressing. 
Um, and so I just would continue on with this same process now that I know what's in there. Um, if you don't, again, if you don't want side salads, another thing I used to do for lunches is I started doing hot lunches once I went on this health journey and then I'll get the question in the chat. So I used to do like grilled salmon. Oh my God, I used to eat this like all the time with um, a side of broccoli. I would saute it or steam it. Broccoli and potatoes, steam those too. Um, oh my God, you should be so good. And I would steam my potatoes in olive oil because it makes it have a buttery taste. You could also do butter as a teaspoon sidebar. So you might feel like, oh, I can't have butter. Yes, you can. It counts as a teaspoon. So you just have a little bit. And then um, for the orange, I would top my salmon with a little bit of um, sesame seeds. Let me just see. I'm going to pause the share and check the chat. Awesome. Oh, that's a good question. I'm glad this makes sense. And I have, I'm glad that you're asking this question. So the question is, um, when is a good time to meal plan? You can see this is a little bit time consuming. Like just in the time that I started working on this spreadsheet, I think we've been already seven minutes, right? Just doing this. So I don't recommend doing your meal plan on the same day that you're gonna do your shopping and the same day you're gonna do your meal prep. I used to do that and I would be so exhausted on Sunday and be like, how are people doing this? This shit is crazy time consuming. It's ridiculous. Um, and so what I started to do instead is that I'll do my meal plan on a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night. Those are the days of the week for me that are like really just kind of nothing's happening and I'm not bothered by a lot of people and I'm not needed and I don't have a bunch of meetings. So that's the night of day, the week I'll usually do my meal like plan like this. And then on Friday, I usually will do, okay, what's the grocery list so then I can go shopping um, on Saturday morning or I've lately, this year I've been all about like having my groceries delivered. I love Amazon Fresh. So I actually build my grocery list inside of Amazon Fresh on Friday and then I just click it and order all the stuff online Saturday morning and it comes to me Sunday and then all I have to do is cut up and do my prep, which is amazing. So that's how I like to do it. But I don't recommend doing it all in the same day because you can see this is a little bit of a process. You'll get quicker at it as you go. So like now for me to make my meal plan, it takes me about 10 minutes and I'm gonna talk about that in best practice tips. Sometimes less than that. It only takes 10 minutes if I'm looking for new ideas, but a lot of times I'm just kind of recycling and we eat the same things. So for example, for this hot lunch that I have with the grilled salmon and the broccoli and the potatoes, I would probably have this for dinner on Monday to make my life easy. It's all the same container. So I can just take this box copy it and drop it down here as Monday's dinner. And then I can have the leftovers up here for lunch. And so I'm not doing as much cooking. The only thing that's missing from here and dinner is I don't have a purple container. So I would have to come in here and be like, all right, what do I want for dessert? And I would probably do uh, the dessert here as a part of this to pair as mixed berries because I'm a huge berry fan. And so then I could actually repeat this if I wanted over here. Or if I wanted to be fancy, I could be like, okay, this is gonna be grilled salmon tacos instead. And you top your tacos with, um, you know, lettuce. So that counts as my green. The yellow is the taco shell here. And then I'm having my dessert as the mixed berries. So then I'm taking the same thing that I maybe cooked on Monday, if I cook enough of these salmon um, slabs, then I can reuse it the next day or a couple of days later in the week but just repurposing it so that I'm not feeling like, oh my God, I'm in my meal prep on Sunday, I'm cooking 800 meals. Not really. I'm just cooking this one thing and I've repurposed it already for a leftover lunch and then repurposed it for um, Wednesday to have something slightly different. Love me some fish tacos as a side note. Um, and so then I can, I would just go on and figure out my lunches, right? Repeat that process for the next few days. For snacks, I usually do the same thing all week. That way I'm just buying like one kind of bulk of whatever it is. So I like to do for green and blue combos. I really love to do carrots and hummus. That's my green and blue. And then I would do like with um, grapes or maybe an orange, something that's easy and quick. If I wanna switch this up, for the other days, I love red peppers. Just straight up cut them up. Oh my God, so good. They're a little bit sweet with hummus. 
so good. Um, and then I might switch the fruit here and say, okay, we're gonna have the other half of my banana. Since I'm only eating half of the banana in the Shakeology, I can have the other half here um, with this. So that way I'm making sure I'm using everything that's in my house too, and I'm not just having a bunch of bananas <laughs> rolling around. Sometimes I do mangoes here too, like just whatever I'm in the mood for to be candid with you. Um, and so if I'm going to do this where I'm going to use what I have for dinner as leftover the next day, then all I have to do really is write out the dinners. Um, and so again, I just based on what I like. So before I started transitioning into more of a plant based diet, I ate a lot of chicken. So I might say, okay, we're going to have grilled chicken and shrimp, like a surf and turf sort of. Um, this means I have to do half of the containerized chicken, the other half of shrimp, but I get to have that combo. And then I might have that with, um, I love corn. Um, it's not high up on the t totem pole of veggies, but I just, I love it. So that's something I might eat like corn and I mix mines with red peppers and black beans. And that gives me actually green and yellow. Uh, so I mix corn with, it's like a fiesta corn red pepper and black beans. Black beans count as a yellow. So then I can have that as my thing, right? And then that means I would have that up here. Um, we just need to add the orange and then I can set up the next thing and just copy and paste. So it just makes my life easier to keep it super duper simple. And I see some chat messages that I missed. So let's go take a look at them. Great questions. I'm so excited. Okay. So one question I missed is when you're meal prepping from one week to the next, how do I store my meals for freshness? So we'll talk about that when I talk about best practices. So I'm actually going to drop it in the parking lot and that's the next thing to talk about. Um, and then I see another one. So I'm just going to see if I can find it here. Oh, nope, that's it. And then we'll talk about staying motivated too, because this you can see gets a little bit mundane, right? Like, oh man, she's eating the same thing all week. So usually by Saturday, to be real transparent with you guys, by Saturday, I'm over this and I don't want to see any more of these particular meals because I've eaten the same things Monday through Friday. So um, just, just for uh, time purposes, because I, I wanted to make sure not to like take this too long. Before we get into best practices, does this make sense how I've come up with this list? Like pretty much everything is done. Can you just type yes or drop a little Y in the chat? Because this is kind of the most important part. So I want to make sure you both are clear on that. Um, big takeaways here. You can reuse your foods, your meals. And another big takeaway, just remember, you can always like repurpose it. So having grilled salmon one way and then having it as tacos the next way with this chicken um, and taking it from this kind of surf and turf style. The next day I might, instead of having it just this way, I might say, you know what, let me make it as fajitas. And then I'm having, again, just a similar content, but a different style um, just to help not get bored to death. So let's address our next things. I'm going to stop this share. I see the questions in the chat. I'm glad this is making sense. Let's talk about some best practices and keeping it um, fresh because it can get old really fast. That was something I struggled with in the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. And again, I'll put the blank template for you in our group. So then you can just work with that. And you'll have to obviously edit it a little bit for your meal bracket, but let's talk about your plan. One of the things that's really important is keeping some sense of variety. Um, for ease in my weekdays, I really do eat the same stuff all week long, which is why I don't post a ton of pictures. Like in the beginning of week, you'll see pictures, and then the end of the week, I don't put a lot of food pictures on my Instagram because it's the same old shit, just a different day, like the song. So I don't put it like that um, because I don't want to bore people, but it is like that boring and consistent. On the weekends is when I explore. I go into Fixate and Beachbody On Demand, and I hope you guys are really using this, and I watch those videos and I pick. So usually on a Thursday night, this is going to sound so funny, I, I call it my food porn night. <laughs> and I watch something in Fixate so that I can add the ingredients to my grocery list and make sure that I order it, and then I'll experiment and cook something new for um, the weekend. Fixate is a healthy cooking show in on demand. And so I don't, we don't really talk about it enough as coaches, to be honest with you guys. So if you've never noticed it in your BLD, 
it's our fault because we don't talk about it enough. We know it's there and we use it and we, sometimes we forget to put you guys on. So um, let me show you this in BLD actually. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Boom. So you can see it. Let's close the food list because we don't need it. Um, it's, it, it's towards the bottom under workout programs. So you kind of have to fish a little bit for it because they think, well, you're coming here to work out. But here towards the bottom on the left side, here's Fixate. This thing is awesome. There are healthy cocktail recipes. They put out new recipes every week. So when I'm starting to get bored and I'm like, this is not going to work. I'm tired of eating the same old shit. This is where I come. They've got Easter recipes. Um, they have how to reset up your pantry, how to do your meal prep itself. So I recommend maybe watching this today so you can be ready for tomorrow. Um, but there's like amazing stuff, banana apple muffins, these banana oat pancakes, I live by them on the weekends. They're so stinking good. It's one of my favorite broccoli crust breakfast pizza. Like there's everything in here. So the videos are five and six minutes. You can see they're super short to watch. Um, it's broken down by the type of food. There's even dessert, so entrees. Whenever I get real cravings because I'm just a sweet tooth at heart, I come in here and I go into um, sides and snacks. I know I'm scrolling a little bit fast. I'm trying to get to my favorite section, which is dessert. <laughs> salads and soups. I go into this dessert section after salads. And like, you see how full this is? And I go into cocktails, so if it's game time or, or my boyfriend's inviting people over here, this is where I come to be like, okay, what can I make <laughs> that is going to be okay with my fitness program and I'm not going to feel guilty about? And this is it, oatmeal cookies and cucumber cocktails and so many good things. I stay in the chocolate round, chocolate pudding. Um, and I've tried all of the, a lot of these, and they really are um, simple things. So... Autumn Calabrese's brother is an actual chef, like a professional chef. So he puts these together in accordance to what's uh, acceptable for her portion control containers, which is super cool. So what, what I do is I watch one of these on a Thursday night. And then in the program materials for this, a lot of people aren't aware of this. If you go to the thing, there's a grocery list. If we open this, you just click on the meal that you want to cook and it tells you what you need to buy to be able to make it. So let's say I want to make, um, I probably wouldn't Whoa, click happy. I got to make it stop scrolling. Oh my God. Technology. <laughs> Sorry. Let's say I want to make these pumpkin pie energy bites. I just click on it and it takes me right to that page. So I don't actually have to scroll all 200 some odd pages of this. It tells me everything I need to buy. So this is how I mimic my grocery list. Then when you go to the recipe itself in the book, recipe books, if you're using the online one, you just click on the recipe. So I literally just keep my laptop beside me when I'm actually cooking these stuff for the first time. Uh oh, I did the click thing again. And I would just click on whatever I'm making. So let's say we're making these almond chocolate squares. I just click on it. Tells me what containers it counts as. So I know what container it will be for that day. And then the ingredients and how to make it and any special notes. But it's all like simple stuff. Almond flour, oat flour. It's nothing crazy that you can't get at your regular store. Vanilla Shakeology. I don't have any. I have one package of that at home. So I might actually be able to make this today. Vanilla extract, almond milk. Like this is simple stuff. It's nothing crazy that you have to go to some estranged market to go find and make it. So that's one of the things I love about it outside of the fact that it tells you the containers and how much time you need. I might make these today, actually. That looks good. I'm hungry. <laughs> um, so make sure you use this. So this is in Fixate. Um, and then make sure you use the blog. So this is the link to the Beachbody blog. When I am bored, when I'm running out of ideas, I go to the Beachbody blog and um, I just open it up and I search for something I need to make. So they have like a carrot cake smoothie, awesome. Sometimes I'll just hit the search, so like let's do this. One of my favorite in the summer, there's this no cook meal plan. You can see I've searched it before. In the summer, this is the meal plan that I use. I just open it up right in the blog. So my computer's going a little slower here to load it for me. And then I could say, here's some 15 lunch recipes to prep. Uh, let's see if it's still up here. Oh, man. I can't find it. 
But here's some examples though. Here's the Body Beast meal prep. It actually goes through the whole plan for you in the blog article. Um, there were some that I passed by that are specific for 80 day obsession if you're doing that. Like here are nine post-workout meals to give you some new ideas. What should you eat before your workouts on 80 day obsession? And I could click on this and it just has the ideas for me. And I can just drop those into my meal plan and be like, mm, what of this looks good? Um, what sounds good? Oh, this is quick and easy to eat. I can do that. Or that's going to be too heavy for me. Maybe I want this breakfast. This breakfast burrito actually looks good. Um, and so then it tells you what's in it and you can just add that to your meal plan. So when I run out of ideas, this is what I do. I don't meal plan every week. I, I am okay with repeating stuff. So what I will do is make two meal plans each month and then I alternate them. So next week is the first week of April. I'll, I'll make a new meal plan for that. The second week of April, I'll make a new meal plan for that week. And then on week three in April, I'm going to go back to the meal plan that I had at the first week of the month and eat that. And then on week four of April, I'll eat what I ate the second week of the month and eat that. That saves me time. But it also keeps me from just feeling like, oh, my God, this is like a really grueling process. And when I need new ideas and on the weekends, this is where, like I said, I come to explore and um, keep things fresh for myself. Other best practice tips that you should just be aware of before we break out of here um, that will help you in your journey that I learned the hard way. <laughs> I learned a lot of things the hard way in my life. Uh, so uh, things to keep in mind. When you make your meal plan, I used to, when I was first learning how to do this, I used to make a meal plan and then be like, okay, if I bought all the ingredients, I'll make it each day. And I found myself not actually following it. So first thing I'm going to tell you is to print it out and put it where you can see it. I literally keep mine on a whiteboard in my house that like is in my office slash living room slash kitchenette. Like I do everything in this room that we're currently in. Um, and so that's where I can see it. When I'm traveling, I keep it in a Google Drive so I can open it up and just read what I'm supposed to be eating on the road. Um, do actually do your meal prep. I used to try to get away with like, oh, I don't have to meal prep on Sundays. I, the stuff is in the kitchen. I'll cook it each day that I want to eat it and it'll be fresh and popping. That's a terrible idea. You have the good intention, but if you have a busy life like mine that's demanding where you might get stuck late at work or somebody might invite you out or you might get called into a rehearsal, um, this is, it's just not a good plan. Just do the prep. Your life will be easier. Plus it saves you time in the kitchen. So like I cut up all my vegetables. I usually cook on my sides. And then the only thing I have to cook the night of are the meats, which I just drop them in the forming grill because it cooks all the meats in like five minutes. That's my thing. So I literally have these bomb ass dinners that I've made in five minutes of my life and I just reheat the sides in the microwave. Um, check off the meals as you eat them, especially if you're not like pre-portioning them in the little meal plan uh, meal prep containers, if you've ever seen those and putting them in the fridge where you just pull out the container and microwave it. If you're doing it more like a la carte buffet style where you have like a big thing of rice in the fridge, a big thing of all the potatoes you cooked in the fridge, a big thing of all the chicken that you're going to grill up in the fridge, then we want to make sure we're checking off the meals that we're eating. So we make sure we're getting all of our containers. And if you ch have a change of heart and like, I like buffet style sometimes it, it, when I have more time and I'm home because then if I decide, you know what, I really don't want broccoli today, I want corn, I can switch it up. Or I want asparagus or I want cauliflower, I can switch it up because it's all like in this buffet style in my fridge. So I can kind of mix and match. So that's another approach. Um, but I would not recommend that until you get more comfortable with doing this, like maybe 30, 60 days in, then you can start doing the buffet style. Make your meal plan every week for early on because that will make it easier. I didn't start doing where I just do every other week until um, maybe I was six months into consistently, I'm not saying you have to do a whole six months, like maybe give yourself a full 30 to 60 days of doing a new plan every week so that you get in the habit. One that gives you what, like eight meal plans that you can recycle. I still have meal plans from last year that I just recycled. Like, eh, I'm not gonna make a whole new one. Let me repurpose this meal plan from last year because I also keep them all in a folder on my desktop since I'm using an Excel spreadsheet. So then I can reference it. And then the only thing I have to do is adjust it um, because maybe I weigh less or maybe I weigh more or maybe that plan I made, I was trying to lose weight and now I need a few more 
containers in there because I'm staying at my current weight, that type of thing. So you do have to adjust it, but you can reuse what you have before. So I did that um, a lot too. So do the first 60 days. I know it sounds daunting. Just take it one week at a time of making the meal plan every week. And that way you get in the habit and it'll be easier. And then you can start to repurpose those like, oh, I'm going to use this one from two months ago and it'll feel new because you haven't had it in a while. Um, and then post your stuff in the group and ask for feedback. We can tell you where like, oh, this container, you actually counted that wrong. It's this container. Or also it gives yourself accountability as you're trying to build the habit of doing this meal planning. And so I will, I'm putting myself on the spot. I will post what I create for myself on uh, each week for the next 30 days, next four weeks, just so that you can also see mine and, and get in the habit. And I'll look for yours for accountability and give you guys feedback on what you're creating and where you can tweak and um, give you guys feedback on, oh, you could repurpose this because you might not have any ideas. You might be like, mm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm not feeling very creative today. And somebody else in the group might see that and be like, oh, that's a good meal. And so if we're all sharing what we're doing, we're also giving each other ideas. Like I'm a big, I love Buddha bowls and stuff like that. And so you'll see that a lot of my meal plans, whereas one of my other colleagues, she mixes, a good friend of mine, AJ, she mixes like cauliflower and oatmeal together. And she said, it sounds really bizarre, but she says it tastes amazing. And um, I'm going to explore that next week, actually, because I need a quick meal that I can eat easily and fast before my workouts for next week. So I'm borrowing from her, but I wouldn't know that if we weren't sharing with each other. So that's a, another way to source um, some ideas for what you can cook besides just chicken and rice every day, besides just salads every day, um, because there really is a wide variety. But what what you feel that restriction is just not being sure of well is this healthy or is it not and that's what we're here for so if you're sharing what you're planning to eat we can help you tweak it uh beforehand so hopefully you found this super duper helpful um i appreciate you guys taking time out of your saturday especially on a holiday weekend to sit with me i did not mean to go for a whole hour i was hoping to be able to do this in 45 30 minutes but i also didn't want to sell you short so i hope you found this super duper helpful if you still have questions if you still need tips post them in the group or direct message the coach that invited you here. That's what we're here for. That's part of what your investment is in yourself is having each of us to support you and guide you through. So when you feel stuck, when you feel lost, when you feel unsure, when you're like having that moment and you're hitting that wall and you're like, fuck this, because we all go there, especially on the healthy eating, talk to us so we can tell you, well, here's where you can have your, your treats. Here's where you're depriving yourself and you're not allowing yourself the other things that you enjoy because it's all about balance. Um, and we will tell you, I don't know about them, but I will tell you, I've never given up pizza. I've never given up chocolate. Um, I've never given up waffles and pancakes and brunch. And I damn sure didn't give up drinking. Although on 80 day obsession, I decided not to have any alcohol. <laughs> okay, so glad we're done in two weeks. And that was just because I wanted to challenge myself. But during my other programs, I definitely was the skinny cocktail queen. So like you can have a regular life and this group is all about creating a lifestyle. And that's one of the things I love about the meal plans that come with your workouts because they don't deprive you. They really are set up where you can eat like a normal person and even out at a restaurant and still be healthy. And that's what it's teaching you. So that's another reason that I really kind of champion and push for people to challenge themselves to change and just adapt and try out the meal plan, not just to get the return on your investment, but because also you're going to see, as I learned, that you really get to eat all of the things. Um, and it teaches you that. And that's pretty awesome. So hopefully you found this helpful. I will post the recording for everyone else later. So if you want to rewatch some of the sections, nice thing about recordings, you can fast forward through my stories <laughs> if I'm bored you to death. And I hope you've already done your workout. If not, get your sweat on today because I'm about to. Love you guys. Take care. I don't know how to stop the recording. <laughs> oh, I found it.